All right, so this is a little guide on how you can turn one of these units here. This is an internal uh, card reader and floppy drive combination into a USB unit. So right now, you can see the floppy drive still has the regular floppy disk connector and the four pin power. This USB, whoops, this USB cable here is only for the card reader portion. Now, that worked fine on my old computer because it actually had a floppy drive connector, but as you probably noticed, most new computers don't because no one needs them anymore. So, what you can do is get something like this. It's an external USB floppy drive. Um, let me show you the box here. So this is what I got. It's a Bitech drive. Um, I mean, you notice this is XP and Vista, so it supports Windows 7 as well. It's just an old box. I just, you know, I tested it out first. It does read floppy disks and everything like that. Um, and then I actually came with a little manual on how to install the drivers, and <laughs> this is one of those little mini CD things with drivers, but you don't need it for Windows 7, it just works. So, you say, well, why not just use one of these? Well, because I already have this, and this only takes up one external card reader slot in my computer, and it reads four types of cards and floppy disks, which I think is just great. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to grab a floppy disk real quick, I have this box right here of my floppy disks. Um, so let's just go ahead and grab one. So you can see here's how this one works. Um, so then the little button pops out. And there you go. So same thing here, right? Um, same, it's basically the exact same thing, and I guarantee you if you take this apart, it'll look just like the other one inside. So. There's, there are a couple different ways you can do this, but a lot of people are like, oh, well, you got to get this converter. Well, not really. So if you look at this, you notice I already unplugged this. This connector plugs into here, and you'll notice it has a connector, like a ribbon cable that connects it to this little logic board here. And this board, I don't know how well you can see it. I, I haven't taken any of the screws out yet, but this board is just screwed onto the metal. It's just a little tiny logic board. Now, these on the inside have... A, the same type of connector, but it makes it USB. So, some people were like, oh, well, you can get a converter that goes from this to IDE and then go from IDE to USB. Yeah, but that's, that's silly. There's no reason to do that. You can just do this. So, I literally just bought this on Newegg. It was about $15, if I didn't already say that. You say, um, okay, so this will void your warranty. Obviously, you're going to have to open it up, but um, that's fine. The instructions aren't even that hard, I just thought I'd make this video because I had to search around and find an obscure post on some forum somewhere that covered how to do this. Um, so that I'd just show you, so you break the little seal, you take the screw out. Pretty much every one of these, I've taken several apart and they are all exactly the same on the inside. <laughs> and they all work the same way too, they all have that little screw covered by the warranty seal. Alright, so that and this will just slide right off okay I'm just going to do this with one hand here because I'm holding the camera with the other um, all right so pop the lid off and look familiar you see this little connector right here so first thing we do take this apart now you see that there's a four pin USB connector here so we'll go ahead and pull this out so here is our connector right here okay now this one is better the last one I took apart was cheap and they literally super glued the four wires from the USB to this board and when I tried to manipulate it the super glue came off and so I had to buy a new one <laughs> yeah super glue plus plus wires bad idea now if you really wanted to you could take this part and turn this into an external <laughs> regular floppy connector but yeah I mean this is basically just garbage now so here is that connector, the same exact connector as this piece, but it has USB. So, what we're going to do is try to make this a little bit more pretty because, you know, you kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of constricting to have this thing on here. So, all right, so first things first, we want to take this lid off. Um, this basically just covers the floppy drive apparatus. Now, by the way, you could take this entire thing and just put it in here. But I know this floppy drive works, so I'm going to just go ahead and use it. 
So what you'll want to do is take, it's this screw right here is the one you want. So let's grab my little screwdrivers again and shoot, this one's too big. Is this one? No, this one's too big too, isn't it? Darn it, I need one of my tiny screwdrivers. I don't know where my small Phillips one is, but let's see if I can use this. That's a little bit too small. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, sort of talking to myself here, but... Alright, just gotta get a screwdriver that's the right size. Okay, there we go. So, took the screw off, okay? Little tiny thing. Alright. So, this cover will come off. Now, the rest of those screws are just for the floppy drive part itself. Okay? So, yeah, don't take these out. So, you'll see, again, very similar mechanism here. Okay, they both look similar, but this one I like a little better. It feels a little bit higher quality. See, instead of having solid plastic here, this is metal. I mean, it, it's a little bit better. So, okay, now that this is taken out... Um, all right, so what next? So, take that cable out. So now, here's our logic board here. Now, what you could do is just snap this in and leave this connector on. But I don't want this connector on here because I'm not going to use it anymore. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and unscrew this, okay? Flip it over, get the screw out. All right, now this one can be a little bit tricky because it's underneath this mechanism. So what you'll actually want to do here is you see there's screws on the side. So what we're going to do is undo these, okay? Now these are just regular full-size screws, but I'm using my little screwdriver anyway because it works. So... Again, these screws you're going to have to put back in, so don't lose them. <clears throat> Darn it. All right, there we go. Get this out. Flip it over. You want to be very careful because the floppy drive uh, has a lot of fragile mechanics in it. They don't quite make these like they used to, and I found that if you jolt them around too much, they'll break. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I do have that one that I can just pop in here, but... Um, why is this screw? This one isn't that really tight. There we go. I had to use my full hand to unscrew that. That was weird. Okay, now, what you can do is very carefully slide this out up and over. So, there we go. This is that floppy drive mechanism. So put this down. Now, so here you can see on the inside, here is our card reader. <laughs> See how small that is? I mean, you look at here, I mean, it's it's a very tiny little unit. So here is the logic board for the floppy drive. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the other screw now that I have access to it. Take this and go ahead and pop this on out. So here's a closer look at this. In fact, it's funny, it does say IDE. It says HFR IDE version 1.1. Um, but it's not IDE though. This is a... it's a, there's less pins on this than an actual IDE connector. It's a it's a f special floppy drive or FDD connector. But so here is your little thing here. Okay. All right. So while we have the floppy drive taken out, you'll see this unit here has a little locking piece. Okay. So simple. We just kind of, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this with the camera on, but we kind of just pop that in place like this. Oh, shoot, it fell out. See, that's what I mean. I'm going to put the camera down like this. All right, so I apologize for the view. It's kind of hard to, I need I need two hands to do this. So this is the, <clears throat> this is the part you don't want to screw up on. Um, all right, so, shoot. Because I haven't, I haven't put the lock in yet. All right, so let's just kind of set it in there, and then what we're going to do is very carefully push these. Shoot. Darn it, this does not want to work. All right, anyway, I know this will work because it's the same connector. You just have to be, you have to just sort of uh, move it around a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, good, so now this is nice and sturdy in there. 
Okay, and here's our USB. In fact, I haven't even taken the twist tie off. I may as well do that. Now, the next question you might ask is, well, that's great and everything, but isn't this the, isn't this the kind you'd plug into the outside of your computer? And that's a good question. Yes, it is. <clears throat> um, so you have two choices here. One is, what I'm going to do, the easier way, is just get a uh, get one of those little plugs that you plug into, you plug this into, and then it converts it to one of these. My case actually has an internal USB plug, so I don't even need to. I'll just plug it in there, but I, I had at one point bought one of these. It basically just plugs into my motherboard, so it looks like this, and it has an internal uh, USB in it. Or rather, an external one like this. The other option is, you see this connector here. I don't want to pull this out, but it's just a, you know, it's just a four-pin connector. You can probably try to find something like this. Now, this one's a little bit wider. You see, this is, you know, this one also has five pins, even though one's a dummy. But um, <clears throat> you can find something similar to this that has this type of ending on it, and then just use that. Okay. So, now that we did this, we basically just want to put this back in place here. So, we'll uh, go ahead and snap this back in. Okay. And make sure everything lines up. I'll go ahead and put the screws back. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to... I'll try. I have to kind of guide the screw in with the camera off because I, I need two hands to do this. Um, all right, so put the screw in. Um, sort of do this with one hand, but yeah, and I know it's going to be blurry. Okay, so that's one side done. Shoot, yeah, I can't. Now, see if the screwdriver was magnetized. Oh, hey, look, it sort of worked. Yeah, anyway, if I if I were bothered enough to magnetize the screwdriver, it probably would have been a little bit better, but whatever. Um Okay, whoa. Is that not lining up? No it is. I don't know what that was. Okay, there we go. So nice and good there. Now all we have to do is Well, okay, so sort of tie this down a little bit. And this might involve some uh, some gluing, you know, some super gluing this connector here down in place like that. But this can just sort of flop around for now. Um, ah, flop, no, no pun intended, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, you can sort of tape it down using electrical tape or something like that. Um, anyway, now we just need to put this connector back on, so let us line this up carefully and slide it back in place like such. And uh, put the little screw back, this very, very, very tiny screw here, that is un unbelievably small. Uh, let's see if I'm even able to do this. I, I don't have a Phillips screwdriver this small, so I have to use a flathead one, because my flathead ones are smaller than the Phillips ones. Uh, okay. Darn it. Alright, um... Oh, <clears throat> it wasn't it wasn't totally lined up. Now it should work. If I can if I can get this stupid screw in here. <sighs> the screwdriver's just All right. There we go. Okay. So, good as new. So, uh, let me go ahead and demonstrate here. I can still pop the floppy drive in, the button pops out. And bam. Like that. But now, on our on the end, we have a USB internal connector and a USB external connector. You know, what do you do with the USB external connector? Well, again, plug it into one of these. So, um, there you go. Now we have a combo unit with external. And again, this is just a matter of aesthetics. If you want to try to tape it down in here, you know, kind of maybe put the wire back like that in fact I mean it, lo it looks like it stays pretty well like this if I just get some electrical tape and sort of just tape this off now the wire comes out like that um, you'd be a little careful with it because you don't want this to come out I mean it is it is it is pretty tight in there I mean it's if you pull on it it's not gonna come out but if you tug it it will so don't don't yank it um, 
but it is in there. It is in there pretty well. So yeah, again, this drive, again, you use it as a backup. If, if this internal mechanism ever fails, you got your backup. Otherwise, just throw in the trash. You might say, well, paying $15 is, you know, well, yeah, um, I realize that is sort of a lot, but uh, it's better than trying to convert one of these because these converters are annoying and, I mean, I don't know, maybe if there's enough demand for these, um, they'll st you can, you know, buy these connectors by themselves. Or better yet, maybe the people that make these combo units will just start making them both USB. Because it makes sense, but I have never seen one. I know, this is an Ultra one, in fact, I'll show you the model number here, if... Mm, it doesn't say, does it? It was manufactured in 2009, apparently. Um, darn it, it doesn't say, does it? Yeah, it's... Anyway, it's an Ultra something or other. I don't believe that they actively produce this model anymore, but, um... But, you can still find them online. But I have seen other ones, other companies that make these, and every single one of them is the same way. The back still has this connector. Again, I don't know why. They probably do it just because, you know, everyone just associates a floppy drive, and they probably figure, well, if you have an internal, you know, if you want an internal floppy drive, you probably are better to have the native connector so that your computer can boot from it. But again, any computer that's modern enough can boot from USB, so you can boot from a USB floppy disk anyway, so. Why not? So, um, sorry for the rambling, and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Um, like I said, I had to scour many pages of, of forums before I found a post saying, oh, I just bought an external and swapped the connector out. And I thought it's just such a simple thing to do. All you do is just take the one apart, put the connector in here, put this back together, and make it look pretty, and you're all set. So I thought I would just make a video so you can see just how easy it is. I don't know how to solder, and I have no experience with anything like that. Uh, you know, the only time I tried to solder something, I broke the thing, so I'm not about to attempt that. But, um, yeah, as you can see, this is this is easy to do. Anyone with some screwdrivers and a little bit of common sense can do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this proves to be useful for some of you who are like me and like having the option to read floppy disks, even though it is 2013. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching.